Today we are going to be studying linear equations. An equation is a statement that the values of two mathematical expressions are equal, indicated by the sign equal. In other words, if you see an equal sign, you have an equation. And if you see a variable, you have a linear equation. Let's say someone gave us the value of x. We could substitute that or replace it into the x and we could perform the function to see if it's true. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. And if we add it to 16, then that would be negative 4. And negative 4 equals negative 4. So the answer for x is negative 5. That is true. And let's see if I give you another answer for x. How about 3? Okay, substitute the 3 in, and 4 times 3 is 12, and 12 plus 16 is 28, and 28 does not equal negative 4, so that answer is false. x does not equal 3. Now, in this equation, we were given the answer. What if they asked us to solve for the answer? To do that, let's look at another equation. Now, this is a problem of addition. That is, the variable plus a known quantity. In this case, the quantity is 7. Now, the way we get rid of the 7 is subtraction. If it says plus 7, we're going to get rid of it with minus 7. If it says minus 7, we're going to get rid of it with plus 7. This is how it works. We are going to add negative 7 to both sides of the equation. Just like that. And if we add the rows down, x plus 0 is positive 7 plus negative 7 will be 0, so we'll just leave that blank. Let's bring down the equal sign. And let's add the negative 5 and the negative 7. And we have negative 12. So we have negative 12 on the right hand side. We have x on the left hand side and x is alone so x equals negative 12. Now stop. This is an equation. That means if we're going to add anything to the left hand side we have to add it to the right hand side. If we subtract anything from the left hand side we have to do it to the right hand side. Whatever we do to the left hand side we have to do to the right hand side. That is what equal means. The other thing that we did is we got our x alone. Now to solve an equation, to solve a linear equation, you always have to get x alone. So that's what we're always trying to do. Let's try a couple of more addition problems. Now here we have 4 plus x equals 8. We want to get the x alone, so what are we going to do with the 4 plus? We're going to add negative 4 to that. Whatever we do to the left hand side, we have to do to the right hand side. Adding down, 4 plus negative 4 is 0, so why don't we leave that blank? x plus 0 is x, so let's bring that down. Of course, always bring down the equal sign. 8 minus 4, and that is 4, so x equals 4. And as you can see, that's essentially the same problem that we previously did. We had a lone x, that is 1x, plus a number. We got rid of the number by adding the inverse of that number, by adding the subtracted value of that number, the opposite of that number. Let's try another one. We have 7 plus x equals 9. And we're not going to add anything to the left hand side because there's no x over there. The 7 is alone. And on the right hand side, we have x plus 9. So let's get rid of the 9 so that we can get x alone. Add negative 9 to both sides, of course. And 9 plus negative 9 is 0. So let's leave that blank. And let's bring down the x and the equal sign. And 7 minus negative 9 is negative 2. Negative 2 equals x, or we can say that x equals negative 2. 
it does not matter which side of the equal sign your variable is on. You can have negative 2 equals x or x equals negative 2. And that's one of the wonderful things about algebra is it doesn't matter where your x is, we can always solve for it. And we're showing you some of the ways that you can solve for x. So let's see what happens if we don't have addition. Let's see what happens if we have subtraction. x minus 5 equals 4. Now we're going to go through the same process. We're trying to get x alone. Now how do we get rid of negative 5? That's right. To get rid of negative 5, we add positive 5. And whatever we do to the left hand side, we will do to the right hand side so that it remains equal. So let's bring the x down. Negative 5 and positive 5 is 0, so we won't bring anything down there. Let's bring the equal sign down. 4 plus 5 is 9, and x equals 9. Let's try another subtraction problem. We have negative 10 equals x minus 7. x is on the right hand side again, and of course it's not alone. So to get rid of the negative 7, we have to add positive 7 to both sides. Keep in mind, whatever we do to the one side, we have to do to the other side. That is what an equation is all about. That's what the equal sign means. If I want to keep my equation equal, whatever I do to the one side, I have to do to the other side. I know I'm repeating myself quite a bit, but this is a common mistake that people make. So let's add negative 7 and positive 7 and we get 0, so we'll leave that blank. Let's bring the x and the equal sign down. And negative 10 plus positive 7 is negative 3, and that is our answer. x equals negative 3, or negative 3 equals x. And of course, it doesn't matter which way you say that. Now let's try something a little bit more complicated. We're going to try multiplication problems. And we have 4 times x equals 20 and we don't have any additions or subtractions on either side. So addition and subtraction are not going to help us here. Our coefficient 4x means 4 times x. 4 multiplied times x. So how do we get rid of the 4? We divide it by 4. So if we have a multiplication problem, we solve by dividing. Why? Because 4 over 4 is 1. That is going to leave us with 1x, and that will get our x alone, which solves our problem. Now don't forget, whatever we do to the one side, we have to do to the other. So the left side we divided by 4, and the right side we're going to divide by 4. Now 4 over 4 is 1, which gives us 1x. And as we've stated before, you do not put a 1 in front of a variable. That gives us the variable without the coefficient, which is always understood to be 1. Now let's go to the other side. We have 20 divided by 4. That is 5, and that is the solution to our problem. x equals 5. Now let's try another multiplication problem. Negative 5x equals 30. Now we have another multiplication problem, that's pretty obvious, but our coefficient is negative. So how do we get rid of a negative coefficient? Well the rule is the same. Whatever number you have in front of the x is the number that you divide it by. That's right, if your coefficient is negative 5, you are going to divide by negative 5. Why? Because negative 5 over negative 5 equals 1, which is what we're going to want. And whatever we do to the left hand side, we do to the right hand side. So we're dividing both sides by negative 5. Now we said negative 5 over negative 5 is 1. Come on, you don't have to put 1 in front of that x. That looks better. Now we have our x alone, and 30 divided by negative 5 is not 6. 
it is negative 6. And x equals negative 6. And let's try some division problems. We have x over 5 or x divided by 5 equals negative 3. Now when x is divided by a number, how do we get rid of it? We get rid of it by multiplying it by the same number. It's the same thing as multiplication. We just do the inverse. We do the opposite. Okay, we have a 5 on the bottom. Let's put a 5 on the top. Now that's times 5. That's not plus 5. Plus 5 is going to get you in a lot of trouble. And whatever we do to the left-hand side, so we multiplied our x times 5, and we are going to multiply our negative 3 times 5. Now 5 over 5 is 1x, and thank you for not putting a 1 in front of that x. And negative 3 times 5 is negative 15, and that is our answer. x equals negative 15. Now let's try another division problem x over negative 7 equals negative 2. So to get our x alone, we're going to have to multiply by negative 7. And of course, we're going to do the same thing to the right-hand side. Negative 7 over negative 7 is 1. And that leaves us with negative 2 times negative 7. Now you can multiply negative 2 times negative 7 or you can multiply your negatives first. I kind of like to multiply my negatives first. And they both turn positive, and 2 times 7 is 14. And the reason why I don't like to multiply negative numbers times negative numbers, you can do that if you want. That's perfectly acceptable. But I can't tell you how many times negative 2 times negative 7 ends up equaling negative 14. Get rid of your negatives first and you're going to make fewer mistakes. That's just my opinion, but in any event, x equals 14, and that is the solution for this problem. And that is the end of our linear equations, and homework is on page 32.